Hey grade fives, welcome to our next lockdown lesson. Um, we're back to history today, we're doing lesson two. Before we start with our content, we need to just quickly mark the work that we did um, in our last lesson, so we are going to go through the answers together very quickly. This is the same table that you should have taken down last time. Um, if you did do the online version of this, you can obviously skip ahead and go straight into the lesson for today. So uh, the answers that we need to have for the table, the first one we needed to fill in was that the sand were hunter-gatherers. There was no answer needed for this one because there was no um, line needing an answer. Next uh, was the size of the groups. There was 15 to 20 sand people in a group and there were up to 100 koi koi in a group. Then the ownership of land. The sand believed that the land did not belong to anyone and the koi koi did not believe that in the ownership of land but did have the right to sources of water. You should have filled in water there. Then movement. This answer needed three different um, points. I asked you to give me at least three. So any of the three, um, any three that you listed from the options I give you here are all correct. So the sand would move to caves during the rainy season. They would move to find water. They would move if they did not, uh, so that they did not use all the resources in one place. And they would move to find food. So any three of those is correct. Then the koi koi would move each season. They would move to find the best pasture, grasslands, or grazing for their animals. Any of those three words is also correct. So you could have told me if it was pasture, or just grasslands, or just grazing. <clears throat> then the leader, the sand believed that everyone was equal, and the chief was the leader of the clan for the koi koi. Alright, so those are the answers for last week's uh, activity. Um, I hope that you've marked it all. Obviously, go back and rewind the video a bit if you didn't catch all of that first time. But now we're moving on to the content for today's lesson. Right, so like we've done in the PSW lessons, I've put these little icons into the um, this video that I'm doing. So every time you see this icon, please write down what is on the page. We're doing a, a little bit of a vocabulary sheet to start with so that you understand the words that we're going to use throughout um, this video. So the first word you need to please write down is Iron Age. The term Iron Age is the name given to a time or age when tools and weapons were made from metal called iron. The Iron Age began in southern Africa about 2,000 years ago. Right? 2,000 years ago, if you remember from last lesson, that's more or less when the South African, or sorry, the first African farmers arrived in South Africa. Next is artifacts. These are items from the past. You can learn about the past from studying artifacts. Right, and the people that study artifacts are called archaeologists. They find those artifacts and they study them to um, tell us more about where they came from and what they were used for. The next word is timeline. In history, it is important to put dates into the right order. A timeline shows events on a line in the order that they appeared, starting from the earliest and moving to the most recent. This word should be that, so please just change that. Fertilizer. Anything added to the earth to help plants grow, for example, manure or ash. Then slash and burn is our next term. Trees and grasses are chopped down and burned to clear a space to plant crops and to build. And then lastly, the word we've got for the end is overgrazed. If the land has too many animals feeding on it, there is no time for the grass to grow back. Nothing will grow. Okay, so these, these words are all relating to the African farmers, which we are going to be speaking about in today's lesson. Okay, we've got this little icon here again. We've got a mind map, so like usual, put your shape in the middle. Your heading and your shape should be introducing the first African farmers. And then we're going to do each of our subheadings going around our mind map. Um, Please don't try and, or I mean, you're welcome to, but you don't have to draw this little picture that we've got on the side here of the African continent. Um, this is just for me to explain one of the points that we've got on our mind map. All right, so the first point, um, the first subheading that you need to write down for your mind map is background. We're looking at the background about the African farmers, where they came from, when they first came to South Africa or Southern Africa, um, and, and how they got here. Okay, so the first um, the, first South Af the first African farmers moved to Southern Africa about 2,000 years ago. Right? They moved from areas around Cameroon in West Africa. Many languages in Central and Southern Africa are very similar and they're called Bantu languages. Right? So 
The points over here tells us that they move from areas around Cameroon, which is in West Africa. So if you look at the picture on the side, West Africa is this side of Africa, okay, the west. There's north, there's south, there's east, and west is on this side. Now, Cameroon is this little green country over here, okay, and it's on the west of Africa. So what this point is telling us is that the first African farmers, African farmers, originally lived up in the western part of Africa, okay, around Cameroon, and they came down from Cameroon all the way down to South Africa and Southern Africa, all right, and they settled down here, okay. Then our next subheading you need to have down is settlement, right, Bantu-speaking farmers first settled along the east coast of South Africa, they built houses and villages, they kept small herds of sheep, goat, and cattle. Later on, some communities kept large herds of animals. Cattle became very valuable to them. All right. So just like the Khoi Khoi, the cattle were a form of um, a form of wealth for the first African farmers. All right. It's a little bit different to the Khoi Khoi, but we'll speak about that in our next lesson. Right. The next subheading: Iron Age. They made tools and weapons from iron. They allowed them to grow for I'm sorry, they allowed them to grow more food to eat and to trade. Growing more food meant that they could feed more people. Villages and communities grew larger and more powerful. Okay? So obviously the villages and the communities would grow larger because they could feed more people, alright? So more people were able to have a healthy diet, they were able to um, become, I think, I suppose a bit older. Um, so Growing more food was very beneficial to the early African farmers um, because it, it helped them to get bigger communities and become more powerful that way. Um, and then just as a side point over here, because they grew more food, because they had an excess, they could also use that to trade. All right, so that's another difference um, that comes with the first African farmers. They would, they would start the, the trading um, in the southern part of Africa. Okay. Next we've got artifacts. There's no written history of the first African farmers, so we learn about them through the remains of houses and artifacts that archaeologists studied. There were pots that were found in Leidenberg, okay? They, um, they made pots to store food. So the archaeologists that found these pots in this area have found that they made these pots and they stored food in them. Now they would they would figure that out by seeing that maybe there's remnants of old food in it, or they could see um, where they were stored, or um, they would have different signs that would tell the archaeologists what the pots were used for. Okay. Then uh, iron spearheads found in Zonjani, I think that's how you say it. This tells us that they hunted wild animals with iron-tipped spears. Okay, so like we've said here in the beginning, there's no written history, so they have to tell what happened or what the things were used for based on the artifacts that were found. Right? So in this case, the iron spearheads tell us that they would have hunted wild animals with um, spears that had iron tips. Right? Then there's a golden rhinoceros, a very famous golden rhinoceros that was found in Mapungubwe. Right? And because they found this golden rhinoceros, it tells them that, or tells us, that the first African farmers traded. Okay, so like I've just mentioned earlier with the Iron Age, when they had more food, um, they grew more, more crops than they needed, they were able to trade with it. And because they had something like a golden rhinoceros, it tells us that they traded because there aren't many artifacts that were golden that they found. So they would have had to get the golden rhinoceros from somewhere else that wasn't a, an area around them. Okay, so a different group of people would have brought it to them and they would have traded together to, um, to get the golden rhinoceros. Um, you will learn a lot more about the golden rhinoceros and Mapungubwe next year in grade 6, but we will cover it a little bit later on in uh, term 4 as well in a lot more depth. Okay, so like last time, if you have not written down everything, pause the video, write everything down, and then hit play when you are ready to carry on. Okay, so before we, we take a look at the activity here, we need to try and understand how the African farmers came to South Africa and the time period that they came in. We know that they came in the Iron Age, we know that they 
came after the sand people had already been settled here for a really long time. So we're going to put things into what we say is chronological order. All right, it's putting things into an order that fits the time period. So from the earliest point in time until the latest point in time. That's how the, a timeline is going to work. So to try and understand how a timeline works um, really well, we're going to do a timeline um, that is personal very first. So here's our little icon again. You need to do a heading for me, please, at the top of your page where you write um, my timeline from 2008 to 2020. You're also welcome to put your name there instead of my. All right. And then you're going to draw a line across your page. It would be best to do your um, this activity with your page landscape instead of portrait because then there's a bit more space for you to write underneath. OK, so you're going to draw your line across your page. You're going to put um, little markers every, let's say, one centimeter going across. And there are 13 of them in total. OK, so 13 of these little markers in total. Right, and you must please put these little arrows on the end. Okay, the arrows tell us that time has not started at 2008, that there was time before 2008, there was years and time periods before that, and time is not going to finish at 2020, it's going to continue. So that's what the arrows are for, that's why they're significant. Okay, so what you're going to do with this timeline is you are going to write down a few things that have happened in your life that are important. Um, maybe things that you've accomplished, um, thing, changes that have happened in your life, and you need to tell me which years they happened in, all right? So most of you were born in 2010, so you're going to leave out 2008 and 2009. From 2010, you can say that you were born, and then you can tell me different events that have happened in your life. So you can tell me when you started school, you can tell me when you lost your first tooth, you can tell me if you have a little baby brother or baby sister that was born, um, any of these uh, important events in your life you can put down underneath the year that they happened. Okay, so I'm going to show you an example very quickly about what a timeline for me from 2008 to 2020 would be. So this is just an example, please don't write it down. Okay, um, this would be, like I said, instead of my timeline, it would be my name, so Mrs. Ramos's timeline from 2008 to 2020. I would have drawn my timeline, I've got the years written above, and I've extended my little increments for each year. I've, I've made those lines a bit longer, <clears throat> excuse me, so that uh, you can see exactly which year these events took place. So I like to use color. You guys should know that by now. I've put down different events in my life that are important to me. So in 2008, I started high school. Then I've left out 2009. Nothing really important happened there. 2010, the Soccer World Cup was hosted in South Africa. 2012, I finished high school. 2015, I started working at the vegan primary school. That was my first year. 2018, I got married. And 2020, I taught the best group of grade fives from home because of the COVID-19 epidemic. OK, so that gives you an idea of what I expect you to do for your timeline. OK, so you tell me important things in your life that have happened between 2008 and 2020. OK, um, once you have done that, Obviously, you can pause the video here and complete the activity, or you're welcome to come back and do the activity after we've finished the rest of the lesson. I think it might be best to do it now and then carry on with the video later, but it is up to you. Once you've done your timeline, if they look really, really nice and neat and they have some really awesome news that you would like to show me, you're welcome to get mom and dad to take a picture and send it to me on Class Dojo. Okay, so these are your timelines. We're going to carry on. We're going to do a timeline now of South African settlers. OK, we've got a whole bunch of different events at the bottom of the page here um, about people or groups of people that have settled in South Africa. OK, now when we're putting things into place in a timeline, we need to go in order from the beginning of the timeline. So the earliest point in time until the most recent point in time. So. I've got the years next to the different bits of information. So we need to look for the smallest number because that was the furthest away from the current um, date that we have. And it'll be the first thing that goes onto our timeline. So if we look at all of them, zero is obviously the earliest bit of time. Okay, We're going to take that and we're going to put it 
into the correct place in our timeline. Now, I'm going to put it at the bottom over here because we've got other things that are quite close to it. And just like the timeline that I did, I'm going to extend this line to show you where it's supposed to live. So this is at the beginning of our timeline, zero. The hunter-gatherers had lived in southern Africa for hundreds of thousands of years. Okay, so that's the first event in our timeline of South African settlers. Now we're going to go on to our next one. We need to look for the next number that is close to zero. Okay, the closest one. So we've got 1,000, 350, 1994, 1652, 700, and 200. 200 will be the next closest. So I'm going to take 200, where it tells us that the first farmers had started to arrive. They settled along the Indian coastline. All right. So that's a group of people we're learning about this um, this lesson, the first farmers, all right? first African farmers. And that's going to go here by the year 200. Let me shift that down a little bit. Okay. So this is the second longest to go thing to have happened. All right. Now we need to move on to our next one. From the numbers that we looked at just now, we can see that 350, the year 350, is the next um, oldest event. So this is where the first farmers moved inland along the rivers and valleys from the coast inland. Okay, so this is going to go over here. Again, I've got, I'm going to extend my line so that we know exactly which points in my timeline this event fits into. Okay. So we can see just from here, we knew that the hunter-gatherers lived, they were here first. Then the first African farmers arrived, they settled along the, the coastline. Then they started to move inland, which means towards the, the middle of the country. Um, if you think about the map of South Africa, it's towards where sort of the free states, um, Gauteng areas would be. Okay. Then we need to look for our next event in our timeline of South African settlers. The next thing will be in the year 700. So that's this one here. Farmers were established in the Eastern Cape. All right. So still thinking about the first African farmers, they had moved all the way down the coastline to the Eastern Cape, where Port Elizabeth and East London um, and those cities are. All right. So that's the next thing in our timeline. Then we take a look and the next closest thing is the year 1000. So this is going to live here next to it. Again, extending my line. The year 1000, farmers started settling on the Haarfeld grasslands. Okay, so Haarfeld grasslands, um, those areas are, are they're surrounding Gauteng mostly. Okay, the Haarfeld is a very, um, I suppose, uh, rich in in grass and pasture. So the Haarfeld has very good grasslands for the or had very good grasslands for the, the African farmers to take the, the cattle and for them to be able to um, stay there for quite a long time because there was lots of grasslands. Okay, Not, a lot, not like along the coast where there's lots of forests um, and not too many places for them to let their cattle graze. There's much more open space. And that's a better way to explain the half -alt. There's much more open space for the cattle to graze. Okay. Next. We've only got two left, so the next one is going to be 1652, okay, because 1652 is less than 1994. 1652 is going to live over here. Now, it isn't 1600 and it isn't 1700, it's kind of in the middle. So we're going to make our line come in the middle of these two numbers to tell us that this point in time occurred between these two dates, okay. This tells us when the Dutch settled in the Cape, all right. So we can see that this is much, much later than when the first hunter-gatherers were here and the first African farmers as well, okay? And then we've got 1994. It is the closest thing to today's date, okay? So here's 2000, 2000 or, uh, 2020 will be sort of just next to it over here. But 1994 occurred just before the year 2000 and uh, it was when we had our first democratic election in South Africa. Now, if you're good at maths and you did a little bit of basic math to figure out how old I am, based on my timeline that I showed you in the previous um, page, you will know that I was born in 1994. Okay, so I will never forget that the year that I was born is when the first democratic election happened in South Africa. All right, so I hope that that'll help you to try and remember the state. Okay, it's really important in our country. You guys should have known it before now anyway, but if not, maybe you'll be able to remember it a little bit uh, more easily, knowing that that's when Mrs. Ramos was born. 
Alright, so this is our timeline of South African settlers finished. Okay, we can see that a lot of things changed from the year zero, which we've got over here where the hunter gatherers started or had already been living in South Africa. And then the first farmers started to arrive, then the Dutch came and settled, and then we saw we had our first democratic election. You can see that these two events are very close to each other. Okay, and the event of when the first African farmers arrived is very far away from the time that we are in today. Okay, so this should hopefully help you to put into perspective uh, when the different things happened and how long ago they happened. Okay, we've got another little mind map that we need to do. Um, I don't have my, my little icon of writing, but please, you must write this down. So, same thing as always, shape in the middle. This will be a new mind map. We're not carrying on from the last one, it's a new one. That's a separate thing. Um, the first African farmers, their attitude to the land. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about um, where they got the name African farmers, how they lived, what they did to the environment that they lived in, and so on. All right? There aren't any subheadings for this, okay? This is our main heading. So all of these points just go with the attitude to the land that the African farmers had. All right, so we're going to start on the side over here, the top left-hand corner. The first thing you need to have written down is that they first stayed close to the sea. They ate shellfish and grew some crops, okay? Because they stayed close to the sea, they were able to get the shellfish, all right? They used seaweed and ground up seashells to fertilize the plots where they where the where they sorry that's supposed to be they grew crops okay so this tells us about their life when they lived at the coastline okay the things that they ate how they grew the crops and what they used to fertilize <clears throat> their um their crops their plots all right then we're moving on when they moved inland okay so when they moved away from the coast they started to change the environment they lived in they chopped down trees and tall grasses. They burned the trees and grasses that they had chopped down and used the ash as fertilizer. Okay, so that's one thing we read about just now um, in our vocabulary, that ash is a good fertilizer. And because, so chopping down trees and burning them to use them as fertilizer is called the slash and burn um, technique. All right. Then on the cleared land, they built villages, oh my goodness, I clearly didn't proofread this before I started this video, I'm so sorry, great vibes. On the cleared land they built villages, they also marked out plots of land to grow crops, they built walls that should be built, again my English isn't very good today, forgive me, it is Monday while I'm recording this, they built walls to enclose their livestock so that they would be safe from the wild animals. Okay, so they built villages. They had settlements that they lived in. We call those settlements villages. They marked out plots of land to grow crops. So if they had a piece of land, they would mark out certain sections just for growing crops, right? So maybe that section was for growing crops and the rest of it was for their huts and for places to keep their livestock, okay? And then they built walls to enclose their livestock so that they would be safe from wild animals. They didn't just let the livestock roam free because they would have been eaten by wild animals like lions and leopards. Okay. Then the last little section of our uh, mind map. The farmers stayed in the same area for a long time so that their crops could grow. They didn't move around very often like the sand because if they planted crops, it wouldn't grow overnight. All right? They'd have to wait a couple of months for it to grow and become ripe and then pick and be able to use. Sometimes they had to move to new areas because the land became overgrazed. We had this word earlier in our vocabulary. If you can't remember, just go back to the words that you should have written down and remind yourself about what overgrazed means. Right, so that's our last mind map for the day. Um, we've got a little activity that we're going to be doing. Like always, there is a link to an online version of the activity. Um, if you don't do the online version of the activity, you obviously are welcome to write down what is here on this page and complete it according to the instructions. I will very quickly go through it with you. We've got, already got a very long video, um, but I'll quickly go through this with you and explain if it does need explanation, and we will take it from there. So you need to obviously have a date, like always. Um, it is activity two of our lockdown lessons. The first question is to fill in the missing word in the following sentences. Right. So 1.1, something are items that archaeologists used to learn about the past. 
1.2. Pots found at Leidenberg tell us that the first farmers made pots to what food? 1.3. Iron spearheads found in Zunjani tells us that the first farmers hunted wild animals with iron. What spears? 1.4. The golden rhinoceros from Mapungabwe tells us that the first farmers did what? Okay. And then the second question for activity 2, answer the following questions. You don't have to do full sentences for this, you can just give me one, way, one word, that's perfectly fine. So, number 2.1, name one type of animal that the first farmers kept. There's three different types that I've mentioned previously, so you just need to tell me one. 2.2, the first farmers moved into southern Africa from around which country in West Africa? Okay, think about that map that I showed you just now with, um, on the, pre the first mind map that we did. 2.3, in which year was the first democratic election held in South Africa? Okay, hopefully you remember it now because of the little uh, way that I've given you to remember it when I was born, hint, hint. 2.4, what is the name of the metal which the first farmers used as spearheads? Okay, very common type of metal, we, we mine it quite a lot in Africa, so you, or South, South Africa specifically, so you should know that. If not, here on the video, go back and take a look or look at your notes. Right, so that is it for today. Um, this is a bit of a longer video than usual, but it's because we've done more than one activity. Um, with the timelines that we did and with this activity now, the, the end, um, end video activity, I'll call it, uh, it has made the video a bit longer. So I uh, hope that you've been able to understand all the different things that we've learned about with the first African farmers today. Um, if not, go over your notes again. And if you're really struggling with something, just uh, get mom or dad to pop me a message on Class Dojo. Or if they give you permission, you're welcome to message me on your own behalf. Um, and other than that, there's nothing left for today. So have a great day. Learn lots and I'll see you next time.